to another episode of Gleams of the Morning podcast. I'm David, your host. Today's lesson is titled, Pruning Your Life. Every branch in me that doesn't bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. John 15.2, W.E.B. Pruning has long been a practice used to shape and direct the growth of plants. It dates back thousands of years and is known to have occurred even before the most ancient civilizations arose. Historians do not know who first discovered the practice. Perhaps it was discovered multiple times by different people groups. While we don't know where it began, we know it certainly works. Some people mistakenly believe pruning is necessary. It's not. Plants will grow well enough without regular pruning by humans. Pruning is beneficial when you desire specific results, for example, with fruit-bearing plants. Pruning fruit trees and berry plants will regulate growth, increase yields, improve fruit size and quality, and maintain plant health and vigor. But most plants grow in the wild with no human intervention. Instead, those plants are pruned naturally. Strong winds are an effective means of removing dead or weak branches. Winds will also knock down trees that are old and no longer yielding to make room for new, younger ones to grow. This has a direct lesson for our spiritual lives. Spiritual pruning is unnecessary to attend church or call oneself a Christian. But if you desire to grow into the person God knows you can be, If you want to bear fruit for the kingdom and increase that yield, if you want to have a healthy Christian walk, pruning is vital. Pruning is a common metaphor used to describe how God directs and shapes us into Christ's likeness. God uses two main methods of pruning his vines. The most common are strong winds we face during life's tempests. These natural processes help to prune our character into that which God desires. The second method he uses are humans. Our parents, friends, co-workers, and church members can all have a pruning effect on us. Alternatively, we sometimes choose to prune ourselves at the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Let's dig a little deeper into the practice of pruning farmers use and see what lessons we can discover. One of the first points to learn about pruning a tree is that you want to remove competing leader stalks. Trees sometimes have a fork near the top, and the two branches that point to the sky are competing to be the central stalk of the tree. A single stalk running up the center of the tree is best for the tree's durability. One of these leaders will usually be the biggest. The other, weaker ones just consume resources and create an unnecessary distraction for the tree. Likewise, in our spiritual lives, we need to work to remove all competing leaders in our lives. There is only room for one. We cannot follow Jesus while also trying to follow other men. We need to work together with the Holy Spirit to identify and prune other leaders that are trying to distract us from Christ. These can be political leaders, business leaders, friends, even religious leaders. Mentors are fine. I'm talking about those individuals who we sometimes come to idolize. Another tip for pruning trees is to remove branches that are crowding others. This is easy to understand, but hard to do in our spiritual lives. In the information age, there are so many things demanding our time and attention. It is easy for our lives to become crowded and congested with responsibilities, obligations, commitments, and desires. To regain control, sometimes it is best to sit down and make a list of all the things crowding our lives. Then we can rank them in order of priority. Anything that is unnecessary or crowding Jesus out of your life needs to get the ax. A third tip when pruning trees is to remove all broken, dead, or diseased branches. This metaphor can relate to so many areas of our life. Relationships and habits are two of the biggest. Traditions can be another. 
This can be one of the hardest areas of our lives to confront. We often don't want to give up the relationships or habits that are broken or diseased. Many times, we won't even admit to ourselves that they are negative for us. We insist that they are fine or we can fix it with a little more time. This is an area we need to pray diligently about and seek strength to follow where the Spirit leads. Another area that is important to prune is something beginners may be surprised by. Sometimes it is necessary to prune roots. This may seem counterintuitive, but experts suggest that it is vital sometimes. This can be another area that is extremely difficult for us in our spiritual lives. But sometimes pruning our own roots is the best thing for us. Cutting our ties to family or friend groups, moving to a new location, or separating ourselves from our current church is sometimes the only way for us to move forward in faith to follow where God is leading. This is an extreme measure and a step that should only be taken after much consideration and counsel with trustworthy spiritual mentors. It is important to be aware that sometimes God calls his followers to take such drastic moves. The last point I think we can learn from this metaphor is that of pruning frequency. Many shrubs should be pruned twice a year. Larger trees, on the other hand, may only require pruning every three to five years. But every plant is different, and so pruning should be done based on each individual plant's needs. So young Christians may need pruning more frequently than mature Christians. But we need to be sensitive to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. It may be wise to have a deep, searching conversation with God a couple times a year, asking him if he desires we prune any part of our lives. Then, as we open ourselves up to the master gardener, he will show us what needs to be cut from our lives. He will not force us to do this. He will instead give us the strength to make the changes he calls us to. Here's a question to ponder. What's one thing in your life that's wrong, that you know is wrong, and that God is calling you to prune? Thanks for listening, and I hope you have a good week. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and share with someone else who you think might enjoy it. Thank you.